Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the M6D AC, a new battery charger by Toolkit RC that operates on both DC and AC and will enable you to charge your mobile devices and two batteries simultaneously. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the charger you are getting a quick start guide and you should note that a more detailed diesel manual is available online and linked down below. You are also getting an AC cable and a USB to USB Type-C cable that will enable you to update the firmware of the charger. In terms of features and specs, on the back side of the charger you can find both AC and XT60 DC inputs. On DC the operating voltage is between 7 and 28 volts and on AC 100 to 240 volts. Next to the XT60 battery connector you can find a USB Type-C connector that will enable you to charge your mobile devices and update the firmware of the charger. On the top side of the charger you can find a pretty big 3.5 inch color IPS LCD screen with a resolution of 480 by 320 pixels. It is not a touch screen and navigating between the different menus and setting the options is done using the channel slash exit button and a metallic roller wheel button. On the front side of the charger you can find two channels that will enable you to charge up to two 6S batteries simultaneously. So on each side you can find an XT60 battery connector, an LED that is going to indicate that a battery is connected and a balance port. Between the channels there is a port for connecting an external temperature sensor which is not included and on the sides there are ventilation holes and a fan that is going to kick in in case the internal temperature of the charger is going to exceed 45 degrees Celsius. In addition you should note that the maximum output power of the charger on AC is 200 watts and on DC it is 700 watts. Regardless the maximum output power per channel is 350 watts slash 15 amperes and you can also enable a synchronous mode which means that the two channels are going to be combined together in order to charge a single battery and then the maximum output power on DC is going to be 700 watts and the maximum current is going to be 25 amperes. As for its dimensions, the M6 DAC charger is pretty compact and it weighs 526.8 grams so it is slightly lighter than the Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro and much lighter than the ISDT K2. Now I've got the charger powered up and a battery connected to channel 1. On the top side of the screen you can see the input voltage in case you've got the charger powered using DC. Next to it the total energy that was drawn from the battery source in what hour. Over here you can see an information regarding the USB output and on the top right corner of the screen the internal temperature of the charger. As for operating the charger, short pressing the channel slash exit button is going to switch between the two channels and in case a battery is going to be connected to the channel and you are going to long press this button, it's going to perform a quick test and you'll be able to monitor the cell's resistance. Short pressing the scroll wheel button is going to take you to the charge menu where you'll be able to set the battery type and if you'd like to you can also use the battery charger as a power supply. In case you are going to charge your battery you'll be able to set the battery cells which can be either determined automatically in case you are going to use the balance plug or if you'd like to you can set it manually. The charge mode can be set to charge, discharge or storage charge. Under charge you'll be able to set the battery and voltage and set the charge current which you can set to in between 0.1 all the way up to 15 amperes in asynchronous mode. In case you would like to discharge your battery the mode can be set to discharge. Then you'll be able to set the discharge mode to either internally which means that the battery energy is going to be converted into heat by the internal resistors of the charger. Keep in mind that this is a pretty limited option that is applicable when the charger is powered both on AC and DC and it is limited to 3 amperes. In case you would like to make this procedure a little bit faster you can set the discharge mode to recycle and then the energy which is going to be withdrawn from the battery 
is going to be used in order to charge the battery that is powering the charger but in case you would like to use this option which is applicable only when the charger is powered using DC you will need to head over to the setup menu and make sure that under the input settings the power type is set to battery. Similarly you'll be able to storage charge the battery so under this mode you'll be able to set the discharge mode, set the end voltage, set the discharge current which just like in the discharge mode is limited to 3 amperes in internal mode and 15 amperes in recycle mode and just like the discharge mode in case the recycle mode is going to be selected you'll need to set the maximum voltage of the battery that is powering the charger because you don't want it to be overcharged. Once you are done defining your settings, you can highlight the number of channel that you would like to use. So now for example, only channel number one is selected, but if a battery was connected to channel two as well, I could highlight this option as well. And then the same settings are going to be applied for charging both batteries. Now I'm only going to charge the battery that is connected to channel one. So now it is highlighted and I can press the start button in order to start charging the battery. Now when the battery is being charged, we can monitor the current voltage of the battery, the current that is used in order to charge the battery, the voltage of the battery per cell, and after about 10 seconds, you'll also be able to monitor the resistance per cell by just moving the scroll wheel button. In case you would like to adjust the current or stop the charging procedure, you need to highlight the channel that you would like to adjust, short press the scroll wheel button, and then over here you'll be able to adjust the current or stop the charging procedure. As for setting up the charger, you can access the setup menu by long pressing the scroll wheel button. Then over here you'll be able to adjust the input settings. Adjust the security settings, turn on synchronous mode which is turned off by default and again this option is going to enable you to use both channels in order to charge a single battery at a maximum output power of 700 watts slash 25 amperes and in order to use it you will need to obtain this type of cable which connects to XT60 battery connectors in parallel. Next you can turn on the continuous walk option which is a convenient method for charging similar batteries. Next you can enable the battery selection menu which is by default turned off and I actually recommend to turn it on because then after clicking the scroll wheel button you'll enter this menu which will enable you to save pre-selections. So for example if I normally charge LiPo batteries at a current of 0.5 amperes I can simply select it, then I can set the channel that I would like to charge, start the charging procedure, and then in case I would like to repeat this option, I can simply enter this menu, and of course you can define multiple charging programs, and in order to delete one, you'll need to simply highlight it and long press the scroll wheel button. Next, under the settings menu, you can adjust the backlight of the screen, turn off the buzzer and adjust its tone, set the user interface language to the following options, set the theme style to light or dark and restore the charger to its default settings. As for charging your mobile devices, including laptops, smartphones, and etc., the M6 DAC charger supports multiple charging protocols. The maximum output power of the USB charger is 65 watts, and once your mobile device is going to be connected to the charger, the charging protocol is going to be automatically detected, and on the top side of the charger, you'll be able to monitor the output voltage and output current. As for updating the firmware of the charger, just like pretty much every other Toolkit RC product, you will need to connect the charger to your computer using the USB Type-C connector on its back. It's going to be recognized by your computer as a flash drive, and then you'll need to copy the new firmware file to the newly discovered flash drive, disconnect it, 
and turn on the charger. Finally, in case you would like to calibrate the charger, you will need to power it up while pressing the scroll wheel button, and then using this menu and a voltmeter that you trust, you'll be able to calibrate the charger. Overall, after initially testing it out, I can tell you that in my opinion, the Toolkit RC M6 DAC charger sports up some really nice features, it is very convenient to use, and it comes in a relatively small form factor. Its main competitor is probably the HOTA slash Hobbymate D6 Duo Pro, which is similar in terms of battery charging capabilities, however the D6 Duo Pro is a little bit cheaper and is missing the USB Type-C charging capabilities. Finally, one last thing that in my opinion is worth noting about the M6 DAC charger is that unlike pretty much every other dual charger, like the M6D for example, where the XT60 battery connectors are located on the center of the charger and the balance leads on the sides, on the M6 DAC charger it's the opposite way, which means that the balance leads are located on the center of the charger and the XT60 battery connectors on the sides, and it can be an issue especially when charging two batteries with short balance connectors. So what I would recommend to do in order to make your life easier in case you are going to purchase the M6 DAC charger is to also purchase two 6S balance extension cables. Anyway, that's going to be it for my hands-on review of the M6 DAC charger. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope it was informative enough, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.